My last video I finished taping and priming, so now it's time to start the flooring. The only floor prep I really had to do was fill in where the old walls were and pull out the staples from the padding from the laminate flooring. The flooring I'm using is a pre-finished solid oak flooring, so it is a flooring you can sand and refinish in the future. Now I've got this flooring in my living room and my dining room as you can see here. That flooring has been in for five years and is in really good shape. You probably notice I'm laying the wood floor right over the existing linoleum. Believe it or not, this is an ideal base for hardwood flooring. It's been glued down for so long, it's very difficult to pull up. It's not moldy, so I'm going to leave it in. Now this is something a typical homeowner can put down. The only thing you'll need is one of these nail guns. Uh, you can rent one. However, I purchased this one for $100 on Amazon, and I've done quite a bit of hardwood flooring. And it was cheaper to have this, uh, cheaper to buy this than renting one for three or four days. What you can do is buy one, use it until you don't need it anymore, and then sell it and get your money back. The one thing you want to be careful of if you're going to install hardwood flooring yourself is make sure the butt joints don't line up with each other in the next row. I usually wait until three rows away to have one. Uh, that's in the same place. I'll show you that later on in the video when I do a few close-ups. If you don't have a compressor and you still want to do this yourself, you can get a manual uh, tool like this. However, you have to hit it really hard uh, to get the nail to pound in all the way. Here's what I'm talking about having the butt joints line up. You'll see here I have them staggered pretty far apart. Now you see here I like to have at least three boards apart before they start repeating again. And even then I don't have them exactly lined up. They're about an inch or two apart. Now it may not always work that way, but that's where I like to have them. And you'll see here sometimes it'll get away from you. I have one here that's a little bit too close together for being only one board apart. Now I've had these boxes of flooring sitting in my living room for about two weeks now. You don't have to have them sit that long, but you do need to acclimate them. Uh, I would suggest doing that for at least a week. I try to lay out as many rows as I can ahead of nailing them down. This gets everything sorted out and makes the installation process go much faster. You have to be careful how far you lay these out and make sure you're getting the board you want in the right place. Having to change out a board because you uh, missed a defect or put a, uh, a butt joint in the wrong place can cause you to have to redo all of what you just did. As you can see here, having them sorted out before you start nailing saves time. All you have to do is take the mallet and grab the piece over, pound the board into place, then hit it with the nail gun. You're always going to move the board around and hit the nail gun with the soft side of the mallet. You notice here I'm still hitting the gun fairly hard. Hitting the gun that hard helps push the board closer and tighter to the next board. You want to have the boards put into place as tight as you can with the mallet before you nail it in. Then hitting the gun with the mallet will ensure that the boards do not have any gaps. 
the gun is too big to get the first few rows. So I use an 18 gauge brad nailer to start the first few rows. I'm going to be running the flooring down the hallway. I want to make sure I have a straight line, so I'm going to use a laser to make sure I'm running parallel with the floor that I've already put down. <laughs> now I'll make an adjustment here, move the board over, and I'll be ready to start nailing it down. I almost forgot to do this part. The floor in this area was very squeaky, so I stopped installing the floor and used two and a half inch screws to secure the floor to the joists. Now I can get back to installing more flooring. I'm going to end the flooring here at the doorway for two reasons. One, I ran out of flooring. And two, I have to remodel this area from the doorway all the way back to that little window you see in the background. That will become phase two of my kitchen remodel. 